All right. Once again, welcome to our Workforce Collaboration and Data Protection webinar. My name is K6, and I'll be your host for this session. Now, before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. If you have any questions during the session, please send them over using the chat panel below your screen. I'll kindly indicate if your question is for a specific panelist. I'll try to bring them up during the discussion or towards the end of the session. So don't worry if you cannot answer any of your questions. We'll try to answer them via email instead. So once again, this uh, webinar is uh, recorded. So we'll send over to you uh, the copy in the following days. So Mike, Glenn, Jeff, take it away. All right, uh, welcome to the webinar. Today we'll be discussing collaboration and data protection as it relates to remote workers. I'm Mike Colasante with Backup Technology. You'll also hear from two of our technology partners, Glenn Wallen with Nordstar and Jeff Marshall with Hitachi Ventara. We've worked with both these companies for well over 10 years, first as a customer building a high performance and high availability infrastructure, then as a partner providing custom technology solutions for our clients. As our name suggests, Backup Technology started about 15 years ago, providing remote backup services. It was the early day of cloud services. As a matter of fact, it really wasn't as much of a term back then. Um, backup and DR was an area of early adoption for most companies. On this next slide, you'll see we've evolved from backup and DR services to include a comprehensive customized cloud offering for private, public, hybrid, as well as infrastructure as a service. We're a fully accredited service provider, reaching and serving clients on almost every continent. Okay, well, that's enough about the infomercial. What we're gonna do now is move on to the current state of life today. So on this next slide, it was inspired by a friend of mine who reminded me it's been a year since what he called the wear your pajamas to work year. So I thought we'd take a look at a few statistics, some of which I found amusing. Who would have guessed 99% of remote workers want to continue working remotely. Certainly not the team that said this was an amazing stat. Maybe that guy working on his laptop at the beach, maybe he thought that. Um, me, I wonder about the 1% who love to hop in their car and drive through traffic every day to commute to the office. So um, I'd also like to understand here, 90% recommend that their friends should work remotely. And then I figure the 10% I guess they need somebody to go into the office, so they might as well send their friend in. Anyways, we all have stories, people working from everywhere. Um, I had a call the other day about a guy. Uh, I told him I thought we had a bad connection, and he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me, let me fix this. And he came back, is that better? Yeah, that's fine. He said, I had to turn the jets off on my jacuzzi. So um, I'll just say at that point, I was just happy that it wasn't a video call we were on. Okay, so on to this next slide, really kind of says bottom line is we all know remote work is here to stay. IT professionals recognize this as an additional security challenge, and pretty much every poll shows that it's going to continue to enable long-term work, work from home solutions well beyond the lockdown. But as with many IT projects, this additional requirement doesn't come with additional IT budget. Most organizations bridge the funding gap, extending the useful life of their data center assets with cloud services for specific use cases. And this hybrid approach for data availability and collaboration are among the top use cases. Uh, but before we jump too far into that, I'm gonna introduce Glenn Wallen with Nordstar. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Glenn Wallen with Nordstar. And I wanna thank you for attending our presentation today. I hope that all of you received your DoorDash gift card. If you didn't, please contact me afterwards and I'll make sure I can track it down for you. Northstar Group began operations in early 2009 and was a company that was built that specializes in practical IT solutions for today's complex market. NSG is a proven IT solutions provider with the understanding that each of our clients has unique characteristics and requirements that mandate individual solutions we know that you are not looking for the one size fit all approach. We pride ourselves for being able to deliver solutions that satisfy each client's specific needs and truly endeavor to become a value partner for each client, to integrate ourselves in your processes, procedures, protocols, and become a transparent member of your team. Our core culture is a personalized service to be honest, 
methodical, and dynamic approach. As you agree, by any measurement conceivably, 2020 was a year of tremendous change. The response of businesses to the coronavirus spurred more enterprises to implement cloud services and force IT security teams to scramble to protect a widely distributed workforce. Security threats also changed as the industry saw increased in ransomware and attacks on the cloud and mobile devices. How will these trends affect the priorities of your businesses in the next year? So let's take a look. In today's ever-changing work environments, we have partnered with Atachi Vantara and Backup Technologies to provide solutions critical to every business security and business continuity. Now I'd like to turn it over to Jeffrey Marshall to discuss work collect group collaboration and how to protect your corporate data. Perfect. Thank you so much, Glenn. Um, so my name is Jeffrey Marshall and I'm with Hitachi Vantara and I specialize in the content um, portfolio of products. And today what we're going to talk about is the uh, HCP Anywhere or Hitachi Content Platform Anywhere. If you look at what HCP Anywhere is, it's really, um, you know, marketing people hate when I say this, but it's an enterprise uh, self-managed Dropbox is really, you know, the best way to, to um, you know, give you some sense of what most people are used to with that feature functionality of a Dropbox type product, except rather than having this out in somebody else's cloud infrastructure on somebody else's network, we actually have all of it available for you to either deploy from your internal um, network. You can deploy it as VMs in your internal network, or if you really did want to, you could deploy it on another provider's cloud infrastructure. And basically what it is, is if you look at the diagram, I just took small little screenshots from each interface. Um, it gives you web access to all of your file content. It gives you mobility access. So from your iPhone, your Android, iPad, uh, access to your file content. And then we also have a client that will run either on Windows or Mac. And that's going to be a file sync and share uh, application. So it allows you to drag and drop files to the interface and those get synced to uh, the, the cloud uh, instance of your, of your file infrastructure. And what we're doing with this is if you think about it, it's um, really the, the old ways of having SIFs, shares, or Windows shares, home directories. Um, so much of that is changing with the mobile workforce. And, you know, things where, you know, if you need to, you know, even do personal things, do your taxes and you have a PDF and your W-2 is a PDF and it's sitting out there and you're visiting uh, your aunt and you need access to it, jump on her computer. It gives you that kind of access from the web portal, gives you that kind of access from your iPhone. Um, and then also, like I say, for larger files and for normal day-to-day -day business where you're in front of your PC or Mac, um, you'll be finding the file sync and share um, to be quite useful. So from an end user perspective, it's great. I'm gonna show you my own instance of it um, at Hitachi. We really don't use any longer um, you know, home directories. We've kind of um, transitioned uh, as a mobile workforce to using this type of technology to collaborate and to work together. The other side of the house, the other uh, side of this, di this uh, screen is the administration of it. So giving yourself all this flexibility also uh, has some security issues that may arise. Um, and so that's what I'll spend the second half of the demo talking about is really as an administrator, how do you control what people have access to? How do you, uh, you know, avoid malicious intent of employees? Uh, you know, how do you deal with ransomware types of situations and that type of thing? So. That's pretty much what we have there. And then the key features um, that I just kind of said, but just to kind of pound them home, the access to file content anywhere, um, self-service for end users. So you reduce those types of support uh, calls. And then um, protection to previous versions of a file, uh, which really satisfy a few things, malicious deletion of a you know, a, a mad employee who just got terminated, um, ransomware situation, or just an error. I accidentally deleted all of these reports. I want them back, that type of thing. And then 
those administrative controls and auditing uh, features. So, okay. And what I want to um, kind of showcase now is the end user experience. And if you're looking at my screen, if everybody can see that, um, you will see a web portal. The web portal is access to my file content. And we're going to go through a series of, of things that I can do with these individual files. Then if you look, I also, in my Windows Explorer view, you'll notice that I have a special tab here that says HCP Anywhere. The file content looks remarkably similar. It's exactly um, what you are seeing in my web portal here. So the file content is file synced and shared from my local client to my cloud instance. Um, and that directory structure is mimicked here, as you'll see. Also, I wanted to show you this. This is a picture of my iPhone. Same thing. See, my file structure is all intact and everything is the same. So the actual files themselves are not actually stored on my iPhone per se. Um, they're really just logical linkage back to my cloud instance of that. So uh, just a little kind of fun thing there to show you my iPhone since I'm not sitting in front of you all. And so um, what we can do is the power of this is great. So from either this instance or from my uh, my Windows Explorer, and also, like I said before, this is also available for Mac users. So from the Mac Finder app, you can do the same kind of thing. Um, what you'll see is, and here's my taxes from 2014. Here's some file here. Um, if I right click on it, what you'll see is in my Windows view, I have a subsection called HCP Anywhere. From here, I can do some really cool things. I can uh, create a public link. And if I create this, what it's gonna do is I can actually email this to somebody. And if they're not in my active directory or not within my organization, they can click on it and open it. Um, first question in your mind is maybe, wow, 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 that's, that's very secure. I'm gonna go into that in the end. I'm gonna show you some of the administrative controls you can put around that. Um, conversely here, we have an internal link. What does an internal link do? Well, when an end user receives the link to the document, they're going to click on it and they're going to be challenged and asked to authenticate via their Active Directory credentials. And so that's kind of nice. Um, and then lastly, create a configurable link. This is going to allow you to do some extra things around the link, maybe set the expiration date of the link. So the link's only going to be active for one day. Um, if they don't click on it one day, it's going to be a dead link. Um, things like creating a access code so giving you a sense of two-part authentication. So namely, they're gonna click on it, they're gonna be challenged for AD, and then maybe in addition to that, they have to put in a code, which you can maybe text to them or send to them in a, a, via a different mechanism. So kind of two-part uh, types of things. And save locally, and this is gonna allow you to not have the file participate in file sync and share to the cloud. It's just gonna be saved locally in this directory structure. And then lastly, you have some more options. This allows you to click on this and open the user portal. And the file history, um, this will let you see everything that's been done with this file, as well as previous versions of the file. Um, that gets into some of, our, uh, some of our use cases that I addressed earlier. So if I click open in the user portal, that's gonna quite simply launch me here to the user portal, which is a different way to get to your file content. So if I scroll down and I was to my tax year of 2014 and I have the same thing, you'll notice that we've got the same types of things are available to us here from the web portal. I can share via a link. I can do things, rename it, delete it, show the file history, open it up in Microsoft Office. This is a really, really nice feature that we have. So what this does is say you are visiting Aunt Edna for uh, St. Patrick's day and she's got the corned beef in the, the pot and she's pulling it out and you say wait a second i need to get to my my excel spreadsheet well she doesn't have microsoft office on her machine how am i going to view this what this does is if you say open in microsoft office what will happen is it goes out and uses an excel online application 
and will allow you to open it up via that mechanism. So it's, it's really kind of nice. I mean, it's very, very cool. We thought of a lot of different things um, to be able to do that um, so that you can you know, get maximum mobility, accessibility to everything as you, you may need it. So, and then lastly, you know, our iPhone app, same kind of thing. You get all of these same types of rich features um, on the mobility devices as well. Okay, so that's what we can do. We also have the ability, if you look here, if we go files, and we say show deleted files. What this does is now by selecting that, that's going to show you everything that you have that may have been deleted. And what it does is it will give you that content here. So if I have, I have a file folder here that was 2020 taxes that I did. So from here, that was actually deleted. If I check to not show deleted things, then you're obviously not going to see that. That's going to be kind of covered up. So by doing this, what you're able to do is give yourself um, access to things that may have been previously deleted. So you can go ahead and you can restore those deleted items. So if you accidentally delete a whole bunch of critical year-end reports, come back and you can actually restore those yourself. Okay, so that, that's really, really kind of powerful there. Back to my um, 2014 taxes, which you can see here. If I click on that, we may want to see the file history. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me an interface that's going to show me multiple versions of a given file. So if I had previous versions, if I had deleted one, um, you would see those listed here. Also in the drop down, it's going to show you if there's any links. If I had sent links to people, um, those will also be listed here as well. So it gives the end user really a lot of ability to collaborate. Um, another feature that you can do is from um, a file folder perspective. So if I have a file folder here, I may want to um, send a link. I may want to share this folder. I may want to share a link to this folder, which would allow that person to upload files. So now we get into being able to collaborate with people in the external world. So if uh, you know, you're working with a consulting company and they need to upload a lot of file content, you can send them a link to an uploadable file. It doesn't necessarily allow them to get access to things in there, but may allow them to deposit files into the, uh, into the shared folder. So that part makes it really good. And then lastly, you have a listing here of your various devices that you've registered to anywhere. These are all of them. And I can go ahead and from here, I can deactivate as an end user any of these if they don't exist anymore. I can do that if I needed to. So it gives the end user quite a bit of control. And then um, lastly, you also have an app download. You can download the Windows app, which I have. There's also an Outlook um, plugin. Uh, the Outlook plugin will allow you to, instead of putting a link to a file or attaching a file to an email message, it will put a logical link to the file. Um, so that makes it really nice. And then all of the feature functionality of anywhere is embedded in that, in that little plugin. And then we have our Mac and then our various iPad, Android types of things here. Okay, so that is, in a nutshell, the end user experience. Now, if I um, go to the administration of this whole infrastructure, um, how are we administering it? Um, this is a, a management console that I'm logging into. It's not the same system that I'm in because I was actually showing you my corporate one for Hitachi Montara. This is a demo system that I have running in the lab. And what you'll see here is, as I log into the system, um, it's going to look a little different. It's more management oriented. So it's looking at hardware. Um, it's looking at um, registered users of the system. Um, it's looking at a lot of different things here. You'll see this is the hardware. So the, this particular system is two VM servers um, that are replicated for high availability. Uh, everything's in green, showing you all of the features and everything. I get um, some graphs showing me how much storage is being utilized and so on. So once again, administrative IT uh, manager oriented here. We have our configuration, which I won't spend any time in. Um, the hardware that is, is doing it. Security, if there were malicious attempts to try to get into the system, security would deal with that. Monitoring is some more logging and some more graphs. And then events is also kind of an abridged logging view 
and then to upgrade the system to a new version, all of that piece of it. Um, access is probably where we'll spend most of our time because this is where we're talking about the individual users and being able to control and audit those people. Um, and so everything is based on profiles. So typically the bare minimum, you would have two profiles, one for administrator and one for users. I have a few more here, but the reason why we wanna do that is we wanna give administrators a little bit more control. We may want to give them higher quotas of how much storage they can have. We wanna give, may give them a little bit more flexibility on the number of devices and the different devices that they may want. Um, mobilization is, is such a cool feature. What this does is this bridges the gap now between this, this anywhere platform and existing NAS shares that you may have. So you may have existing NAS shares that you want to mobilize through anywhere. So if you have a big window share out there that has big annual reports, uh, mobilizing it will now allow that file to be accessed via all of the devices that I've just been showing you which is really nice. Um, data exclusion is gonna be excluding those file types or directories that you don't want to show. Um, backup, uh, what's nice here is you can utilize HCP Anywhere as a backup mechanism for your laptop or your computer system. Um, you can direct certain directories to be backed up, uh, active, active, real time um, with the Anywhere server. So this kind of serves also as a system backup. Uh, and then the management console, which we're in, and the different users and groups. This is interacting with your Active Directory, um, you know, so that you can add Active Directory groups to your uh, your Anywhere groups. So it just saves you um, from typing an individual people's name if you just want to add a group to it. Okay. And so that's that's what we do is we set up a profile, and then into that profile, we go ahead and we select individual people that we want to add to this group or groups that we want to add to this group. And this is interacting directly with your Active Directory, allows you to do that. If you aren't an Active Directory user, we do have SAML, which lets you use uh, additional identity providers. So you have that flexibility to use, um, you know, Windows 365 type of, of identity providers, which makes that kind of Okay, so enough about that. Let's go now to the registered users. And this gets into how do we audit users? How do we control end users? Um, we have the ability here to deactivate a user. Um, if I look at file sync and share, I have the ability to override some of their settings. Uh, do I want to allow them to do public link sharing? So I can actually turn that off as an administrator for an individual or for the whole system. So I can say, hey, whole system, I don't want anybody be, to be able to share links via public methods. So that would turn that off, which is kind of nice. And so this just gets you into all of the individual settings. There's a huge amount of them, so I won't bore you with those. Um, get into more of the meat of it here, which is I have my individual user. I have the fact that I know this user is authenticated via Active Directory, that's the domain that they're in. I can delete the user because I'm an administrator or the more powerful tool is I can audit this user. And by auditing a user, what I can do is I can actually see what they've done as well as recover file content that may have been deleted um, or uh, you know is, is not accessible by any other means. So from here, I can see my user activity I can see that the account was registered. That's really all that's been going on. If I click the drop down files, it'll say user activity and then the private files that that user may have or been interacting with. If I click on files, uh, you'll see that I have a series of files that are in this particular user's directory. And once again, this is not the same infrastructure that I showed you before. That's my corporate one. That's why you saw all the files. This is just a, a lab system, so I can demonstrate what an administrator can do. Um, if you'll see here, I can click on this. This is going to show me deleted files and folders. So I had two files that were previously deleted. And what I can do to these is I can click on this and I can recover them if I want. So I come here and I can say show the file history. I can download it or recover it back. So it, it makes it really kind of kind of cool that you can get back to that deleted content. Then 
um, what I can see is from here, I can actually see some of that historical file information um, based on these individual files. So if I go here, click on this, and then from here, I wanna see that file history. I can now see that it was actually created back on March 16th, 2021. That's when I uploaded it for today's demo. And then I deleted it on purpose so that you could see what a deleted file looks like. So what's really nice is you can then see these and you can, uh, you can promote them to the current file. So if I undelete it, that's gonna undelete it. And then I can even roll back to a previous version of it, which is really kind of cool. So gives you all of that capability. Uh, you can also see the shared link access. So this is gonna show you if that person sent this file to somebody via a link and if somebody accessed the link. So it keeps all of that logging information for you. And then lastly, file access is gonna give you uh, ability to see who's accessed the file. So it's really, really such a, such a powerful, cool tool. And it's, it's fairly simple, you know, I mean, it's fairly simple for an end user to use, for an administrator to administrate, and, uh, you know, for that ability to audit end user uh, information there. So that is, for the most part, how we do administration of an end user, how we audit an end user. And then um, getting into some of the other things, authentication is just going to be, you know, how we connect this to the existing Active Directory. Um, setting up team folders is a great, great feature. So uh, we start talking about collaboration, uh, being able to share this, to use uh, team folders, as opposed to uh, being able to use uh, shared uh, mounts or SIFs, Windows, shares, home directories. Um, team folders is really a way to do that. So if you set up team folders or shared folders, that doesn't account count against the individual person's quota. Um, you can invite people via email to participate in a team folder. Um, and what you'll see is if you look at some of these with the little icon with people next to them, that's going to indicate that it's a team folder. Um, and so it, as an individual, you can manage who has access to it. If it's a work group that you're collaborating with, you can add uh, an active directory group or add the individual people to that. Um, and then they can go ahead and utilize uh, the team folders that way. So it just it's just really, really nice. And then you can send uh, requests. Um, requests can be made to have an individual join the team folder, or you can send email messages inviting them, which is really nice. And security and events, that's pretty much straightforward there. Um, and that is really how we administer the system and what the end user experience would be like. So, um, you know, I guess we can open it for questions now. Um, while I'm in the system, you know, feel free to ask questions or K6 if people are emailing questions, um, you can definitely shout those out to me and we can address them. Mm -hmm. Who among you would like to take this? But the question goes, so when an employee leaves, what happens to their files? Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so um, when that scenario, um, what would happen is let's just say that their um, laptop um, has been uh, you know, deleted, wiped out. Um, they've deleted everything. Um, and, uh, you know, theoretically, they have no access to the files. And um, maybe, you know, their manager had no access to the files. Then, you know, what do we do? And that's a scenario where um, it makes it really, really quite easy to be able to come in and look via the uh, registered user view um, from an auditing perspective. And then from here, what you could do is as an auditor, you could go ahead and turn over ownership of, of that directory or those files to let's just say the person's manager or whoever needs access to those files. So in a situation where um, you, know, you may not have physical access to the directory structure of those files, you'll still always have access to the file content. And from here, the files can be downloaded um, or their ownership can be changed. They could be added to a team folder. And then that person's, um, you know, the person who needs access to those files would then have 
that from their own interface. So you can either do two things. You can recover anything that that person may have maliciously deleted, or you can um, uh, change ownership so that that next supervisor or the person needs them has access to the file content here. Mm -hmm. So nice. hopefully that answered that. <laughs> nice. And we have a question here from Paul Stewart. This uh -huh. is still for you, Jeff. Uh, could you speak a little more on how the system can protect against ransomware? Sure, sure. So um, the system itself, um, you know, we never really said, oh, this is, you know, addressing specific ransomware. What we did was we just um, utilize versioning of the individual file itself. So if you were to look at the mechanism behind anywhere, uh, what you would see is a worm system. So it's a system, write once, read many. The system itself takes the file, whatever it is, and in essence inoculates it against any sort of malware, ransomware types of things because the file is kept. Um, the hash is taken of the file at the time it's digested and the file is kind of kept in an inert state. It's not able to be accessed. If it's an executable, it's not able to be launched. Um, and because of that, we're gonna be tracking the versions of those files. So um, if you have a previous version of a given file, that's gonna be viewable here. Okay, so if I come here to the file history view, um, what you would see is, you would see all of your previous versions. And if you know that uh, the file hit the organization at a certain time frame, all you would have to do is roll back to a previous version, which would be listed here, right click on it, and that version will now become the current version. So it's, it's a way for you to keep any um, potentially dangerous files inoculated and just stored in the zeros and ones at the very core storage system. Um, and then also have a historical reference of when that file came in, which one you think was corrupt. And typically as an administrator, a system administrator, you'd be able to see size wise, oh, it's the file has been 7.1 megs. And then all of a sudden it's now 20 megs. That must be the corrupt one. And you just roll back to the previous one. And then you're good to go from the perspective of having the last good copy of the file itself. So that's kind of how the system itself, um, just in its nature, um, mitigates any kind of ransomware or virus uh, uh, problems. Okay, so that's, that's it for okay. that question, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, one more question, uh, Jeff, are there any features to help with uh, sensitive data on uh, lost uh, devices? Example, uh, your laptop, your mobile device, what will happen? Oh, yeah, that's a good question. So, yeah, you, you can definitely, um, it, typically what organizations do, and this kind of is twofold. I can only really speak to what Hitachi Vantara does. Um, Hitachi Vantara Terra actually um, takes our mobile devices and we share a certificate with corporate. That certificate allows management of that device, not necessarily being able, you know, people at corporate being able to get into the device and see what my files are or anything of that nature. Um, it's more in the event that my device is lost. Um, they have the ability to wipe the device, if you will. Um, you know, if there is any sensitive data on it. The nice thing about this is you may recall that when I showed you the picture of my mobility device, I'm probably not sharing again, apologies. Uh, that's okay, it's not, not that important that I share it, but when I showed you my, my iPhone, important to know that my files are not actually on that iPhone. It's an application that gives me logical linkage that I would then have to authenticate to to get back to my files. So, you know, from a corporate perspective, you can have, you know, applications um, out there uh, that, uh, you know, mobile iron, there's one that comes to mind and those types of situations where your organization can wipe your device, uh, to wipe out your email and everything in case it uh, is compromised. Um, but with our application, it's not actually the files that are on the mobile device, it's actually just links to them. Um, if it was my laptop, let's say, if the laptop had file sync and share, 
that file content obviously would be there resident on the laptop itself. From that, uh, we would have the ability as an administrator, you could go in and disable that user. If that user is disabled, then it, in essence, anybody in possession of the laptop um, would not be able to click on the subtree uh, that's in Windows Explorer, it says HCP anywhere. So they would be basically locked out of that um, over and above uh, even the normal Active Directory login to the device. So we have a bunch of different ways to address it, but uh, suffice to say, it's uh, pretty secure, secure as it could be in today's environment about a protected file. Mm -hmm. Nice. And do we have another question here from Brian? Um, so is this system HIPAA compliant regarding file sharing in and outside the network? I assume it is, but he has yes. asked. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, it is actually. Um, the origins of this product were actually to compete with uh, EMC Centera. Um, and so we, from day one, this product, as well as its underlying infrastructure, were always written to be HIPAA and SEC 17A4, um, 3010, DOD, um, all of those requirements, and I probably got those all jumbled up, so don't hold me to re regurgitating that back to you. Um, but the product itself was designed to meet all of those stringent requirements um, in the space of immutability, because like I say, when a file comes into the system, a hash or an MD5 encoded hash of that file is taken, that is kept with the file as metadata. So the system's constantly checking the hash to make sure nothing has changed. If it is changed, the system will do a self-healing and revert back to the last copy of it. Um, so it's just a kind of a way to protect. It's really the equivalent of writing to an optical disk, but doing it in spinning disk uh, technology. Um, so yes, very, very compliant on many different fronts. So far, I think we don't have any questions, but to all the attendees, if you do have some follow-up questions, feel free to uh, reach to either Mike or Glenn in here. We're showing their contact information, but Mike, would you like to conclude the session? Yeah, I'll just say, you know, thank you for, for joining and, and anyone who uh, didn't receive their lunch voucher, reach out directly to Glenn Wallen. You have his information there and he'll, he'll take care of you on that front. And if you're interested in talking further, you can reach out to either Glenn or myself on the, um, on a possible proof of concept or maybe your specific use case and see if there's a fit there. Um, we really thank you for joining and uh, have a great afternoon. Glenn, did thank you have you any everybody. final words or is that enough? <laughs> Mike, thanks. I think you did a great job. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining. And by all means, uh, if, you know, the best way to take a look at this is that we could arrange a little deeper dive for you. And if there's more interest, we could do a POC on your site for you as well. And I think that you'll see what a lot of my customers have seen when I've done this, that uh, everyone's happy and loves it. Nice. All right. So thank you, everyone, for your time, to all the panelists, uh, the attendees. We'll uh, keep in touch. Take care, Thank everyone. Thanks so much, everybody. Stay bye -bye. healthy. Bye-bye.